Once again, welcome back to Learning Pharmacology Pharmacy. So today's topic is a requested one. So it is lipid-derived autocoids and the peptide autocoids. So in the last video, we have learned that these autocoids are substances that are produced by wide variety of cells in our body and it has intense biological activity, but they act locally. That is at the site of its synthesis and release. And because of this reason, they are also called as local hormones. So this uh, autocoids uh, can be can again be divided into amine autocoids, lipid derived autocoids, and peptide autocoids. So today we are going to deal with lipid derived autocoids and uh, peptide peptide autocoids. So let's first see lipid derived autocoids. Lipid derived autocoids include prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and platelet activating factor. Whereas peptide autocoids are plasma kinins, that is bradykinin and angiotensin. So, the lipid derived autocoids, that is prostaglandins and leukotrienes, are biologically active lipids that is derived from 20 carbon polyunsaturated fatty acids, mainly arachidonic acid. And this PG and leukotrienes are type of eicosanoids. This word eicosa is the Greek for 20. So since it is derived from 20 carbon polyunsaturated fatty acids, this PG and leukotrienes are types of eicosanoids. In our body, prostaglandin, PGE2, PGF2 alpha, and PGI2 are primarily found. Now let us see in detail about prostaglandins. All prostaglandins contain one or more double bond and the number of double bond is indicated by suffixing the number in the name. For example, in PGE2, 2 is the number of double bond that is present in it. So physiologically, this prostaglandin is synthesized at the site of action and they are active even in low concentration but they are destroyed very quickly because of this because of their instability short duration of action and uh, lack of tissue specificity the natural prostaglandin have limited clinical application but various synthetic derivatives are there to overcome this difficulties let us move on to actions of prostaglandins first the action of prostaglandins on cardiovascular system prostaglandin e2 and prostaglandin f2 alpha they cause vasodilation in most of the vascular bed not all vascular bed but in most of the vascular bed they causes vasodilation so that is the action on cardiovascular system Next is its action on smooth muscles. In smooth muscles, this prostaglandin, especially prostaglandin E2, E2, will stimulate myometrium and thereby increase intestinal motility. Next is PGE. PGE inhibits uh, the tone, that is the normal degree of force and pressure of the tracheal and bronchial muscles. When they inhibit the tone of the tracheal and bronchial muscles, it will produce bronchodilator action. So in smooth muscles, uh, they stimulate myometrium and increase the, increase the intestinal motility. And uh, PGE, they causes produ or produces bronchodilator action by inhibiting the tone of tracheal and uh, bronchial muscles. Next is action of prostaglandins on gastrointestinal system. These prostaglandins are distributed throughout the gut, but their concentration varies uh, in different parts of guts. This PGE2 and PGI2 have a cytoprotective effect on gastric and duodenal mucosa in humans uh, because it inhibits gastric acid secretion and also enhance mucosal blood flow and thus have a cytoprotective effect on gastric and duodenal mucosa in humans and this prostaglandin stimulate intestinal fluid secretion and cause diarrhea 
if administered orally or parenterally in man so next is prostaglandin's action on cardiovascular system prostaglandin e and prostaglandin i2 are very potent peripheral vasodilators but this pgi2 is almost five times more potent uh, but the vasodilator effect of prostaglandin is mainly localized to arterioles precapillary sphincter and postcapillary venules but the prostaglandin pgf2 alpha constricts arterioles and veins so vasodilators are pge and pgi2 whereas pgf2 alpha constricts arterioles and veins next is uh, prostaglandin action on kidney in kidney prostaglandin e2 prostaglandin i2 they cause diuresis natriuresis and caliuresis by acting on the renal tubules that is they cause diuresis means increased or excessive production of urine then natriuresis that is excretion of sodium in the urine and caliuresis that is excretion of potassium in the urine so these are the actions produced by pge2 and pgi2 in kidney by acting on the renal tubules next is pge and this prostaglandin e inhibits water they inhibits water reabsorption which is induced by anti diuretic hormone and it also inhibits chloride reabsorption so these are the actions produced by prostaglandin in kidney next is action of prostaglandins on reproductive system they have st stimulant action on the uterine smooth muscle and while doing animal experiment it was observed that this prostaglandin causes regression of the corpus luteum that is luteolysis and reduction in secretion of progesterone so this can prevent the implantation of fertilized ovum and this was found in animal experiments prostaglandins are also present in the semen but their physiological role is not clear next is action of prostaglandin on cns uh, this prostaglandins produce many action on the cns but the major role of prostaglandin in cns is considered to be as a transmitter substance next is this prostaglandin e2 has been implicated in the causation of fever and this pge2 also promote the release of several anterior pituitary hormone so these are the roles of prostaglandin in central nervous system now let us see miscellaneous actions of prostaglandins prostaglandin e1 and prostaglandin e2 they both block the lipolytic effect of adrenaline acth and glucagon acth is adrenocorticotrophic hormone so they block the lipolytic effect of these three and they also stimulates that is pge2 especially pge2 stimulates the adrenal steroid production and insulin release and they have certain therapeutic use also that is they are used as abortifacients as gastric cytoprotectives uh, they are used in impotence and they are also used in the treatment of primary pulmonary hypertension so next lipid derived autocord is leukotriene all leukotrienes are derived from a common precursor that is leukotriene a4 or lt a4 the other leukotrienes are lt b4 lt c4 lt d4 and lt e4 this three are also known as slow reacting substances of anaphylaxis
Next, let us see the pharmacological action of leukotriene. Leukotriene B4 is an important mediator of inflammatory pain. And the leukotrienes C4, D4, E4, which is collectively known as SRSA, they are also called sulfidopeptides or cystinyl leukotrienes. These leukotrienes play an important role in the inflammatory process. LTB4 is mediator of inflammatory pain and this LTC4, D4, E4, they play important role in the inflammatory process. They cause a contraction of smooth muscles which is vigorous or sustained and they constrict the cutaneous blood vessels. Uh, they cause increased mucus secretion in the airway and they also cause immune modulation. The third lipid derived autocord is platelet activating factor or PAF. So this platelet activating factor is an either linked phospholipid. So let us see its actions. First is on visceral smooth muscles. In visceral smooth muscles, contraction occurs by its direct action, by the direct action of platelet activating factor, as well as through the release of leukotriene C4, thromboxane A2 and prostaglandins. Next is its action on stomach. This PAF is ulcerogenic in nature and they also contract gastric smooth muscles. Another action is uh, it causes platelets to aggregate and blood vessels to dilate. That is it causes platelet aggregation as well as dilation of blood vessels. Thus uh, it is important in the process of hemostasis. Now let us see about peptide autocords. Peptide autocords include angiotensin and plasma kinins, that is bradykinin. This angiotensin are peptide hormones that are derived from angiotensinogen. This angio angiotensinogen is synthesized by the liver. So angiotensinogen get converted to angiotensin 1 by circulating running from the kidney this angiotensin 1 then convert gets converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme in plasma this angiotensin is further converted to angiotensin 3 in the body but this angiotensin 2 is the most important versatile and potent angiotensin now let us see the actions of angiotensin 2. This angiotensin 2 causes rapid regulation of arterial blood pressure which is in response to acute fall in blood pressure. They cause rapid regulation of arterial blood pressure by constricting the arterioles and to a smaller extent venules. They also release adrenaline from adrenal medulla and also stimulates autonomic ganglia and increases the output of noradrenaline from adrenergic nerve endings. The next uh, peptide autocord is bradykinin. Bradykinin is a plasma kinin that is produced by the liver and it is present in plasma. So the actions of this peptide autocord bradykinin are it causes marked bronchoconstriction in asthmatic patient that is they act on the smooth muscles of bronchi and causes bronchoconstriction in asthmatic patient they can release histamine and other mediators from the mast cell next one is uh, they increases permeability of the blood brain barrier and the another action is uh, the kinins increase renal blood flow and they facilitate salt and water excretion by acting on renal tubules thank you for watching bye